Hey guys and gals, it's Lou from Country Club Comics here with a video about the Marvel Christmas themed treasuries. Stay tuned. So in the last video, we talked about the DC Christmas themed treasury editions from the 70s. In this video, we're going to look at the Marvel Christmas themed treasury editions. And I really think that Marvel has always embraced Christmas in a, in a just as much as DC, uh, but it probably in a more fun way, I think, than just by the nature of their stories. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, stop this video and go see it. It's so masterfully done in a fun and emotional Marvel way. It's the first, in my opinion, the first journey back in this phase to what the MCU was. It's my opinion, okay? And it's what made the MCU so popular in the first place. It's just my opinion. I feel like, unfortunately, at the end of this phase, that's when they sort of, you know, hit the nail again uh, with this uh, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So check it out when you get a chance. Anyway, back to the treasuries. There have been dozens of Christmas-based stories from Marvel, without a doubt. But oddly, for these treasuries... The Marvel editors did something a little bit different than DC. They chose only one or two holiday themed stories and the rest were just good stories they put into the collections. Now they issued three of these treasuries. Uh, one in 74, one in se 19, 74, 1975, 1976 and they were all entitled Giant Superhero Holiday Grab Bag. And they had Spider-Man, The Hulk, Doctor Strange, Luke Cage. Luke Cage is a very cool line in one of them, by the way. You know, uh, Black Widow, Daredevil, Thor, I mean, you name it, the characters were here, okay? I gotta tell you, my favorite story from the bunch has to be in the 1974 grab bag. With uh, It's a team-up with Spider-Man and the Human Torch. Um, I really can't wait for them to be on the big screen. It was a reprint of Marvel Team-Up number one. And they're in battle or trying to capture the Sandman. And of course, it's Christmas Eve. And as they're on their little adventure, you know, Spider-Man saves someone, then the torch saves someone, and, and that person that got saved always has to, you know, retort with the obligatory Merry Christmas or whatever. Kind of cool, but it's, it's that Merry Christmas theme is peppered throughout the entire story. Um, and then they finally corner the Sandman. They corner him in a house, and they're just about to take him down, even though, how are you going to take the Sandman down, honestly? Um, and he says, just, fellas, just give me a second. Let me just do this one thing and I'll come with you peacefully and you can bring me in. I said, what do you got to do? And he's, he, he was going the whole night to try and get to his mother and give her a Christmas gift because he hadn't been there in a while. And he got there and he, and he gave it to her. And of course, Spider-Man and the torture just suckers for a sentimental story. And, uh, they say, okay, do what you got to do. Then we're taking you in. All right. He goes in. He leaves. He, they, they can't catch him. They see little grains of sand in the sink. The Sandman is gone. And then they don't seem to really care too much. But, it, you know, of course, it ends with, you know, this great message. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. It's, it's just one of my favorite stories. And um, to be honest, I didn't realize till I was reviewing this that that was Marvel Team-Up number one. And... I have Marvel Team Up number one, but I have it, you know, slabbed. So if you're slabbing your books, make sure you know what's in them. Read them first, if you can. All right, so um, let's move on. So in 1975's Grab Bag, this is one of those examples where they didn't use a, a holiday-themed story, but they used a story that was, that was kind of profound. It really was. This was a reprint of Hulk 147. And I don't think it was the entire issue because it was a very short story. So it must have been part of a larger story where the Hulk uh, finds himself in the desert and he's in a mirage. He doesn't realize it, of course, he's in a mirage, but he comes upon this, this mirage of a town where no one is afraid of him. No one runs away. No one tries to kill him. It's a true paradise for the Hulk. And for a brief moment, he's happy. 
and he comes across this girl who's sitting in a chair. I'm not sure if it's a wheelchair or just a chair. He comes across this girl and she's talking to him and he goes, you're, you're talking to me? Like, like it didn't matter who he was. He was, wasn't being judged or prejudged, right? And he was, you see this, 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 this moment of, oh, I can relax. I'm, I'm someplace where I'm safe. And he goes to reach for the girl's hand. And he goes, I'll never leave you. I'll stay here forever. He uses different words, but that's the general idea. He goes to reach for a hand and she slowly just disappears. And everything around him now is disappearing. The people in the street, you know, uh, the town itself is just gone. And he just sees the desert. And, of course, he, he out of frustration, he bangs the desert, causes an earthquake or... And it's read by somebody in an office somewhere. But it's such a, a sad story, and it's it really is uh, such a such a strange, um, significantly profound um, assessment of the psyche of the Hulk. And we don't really see that part of it too much or too. We always want the Hulk to smash and Hulk to, but he's he's this this hulking figure. The MCU is a different thing. They they've you know sort of. You know, reconcile that that he's he's accepted and he's a, he's, a, he's a hero, not a superhero. He's a hero to people. But in the comics, he's always a brute. He's always somebody to be feared. And in this story, he wasn't. He was he was like everybody else. And when that was taken away, you can see the the depression on him and the sadness, and of course the anger. Right. Great story, but not again. Not, nothing to do with Christmas at all. But I think just a great story for this grab bag. Well worth it to pick up this this treasury just to have that little story in there. And then there was a 1976 grab bag, and there was a reprint of Daredevil 86. And in that, Daredevil has a battle with Ox. I didn't realize how kind of ferocious Ox is, but he is. But that's only a backdrop to this this relationship he has going on with Karen, and apparently with Natasha. So I'm not really quick on the um, the Daredevil lineage of of romance is only to know that he's he gets around but in this one what happens is karen breaks up with him or he breaks up it's sort of like a mutual thing but it's very sad she breaks it off and the moment she leaves the moment she leaves his mind goes to natasha now up to this point there's been no christmas or seasonal mentions at all nothing about that theme at all and his mind goes to Natasha, who is in Los Angeles. So the story then flips over to Natasha, who's in a room with Johnny Blaze. They're looking out the window, and um, and they see it start to snow in Lo in Los Angeles, which is quite unusual. And in typical superhero fashion, what do they do? They say, oh, let's go figure out what's going on. Come on, come on, come on. They go downstairs. And who's out there is Iceman, who's creating this snow in a Edward Scissorhands type of fashion. And who's he there with? He's there with um, Hercules and all the other champions from that champion series in the in 1970s. Um, and then it just happens, it ends on a basically a snowball fight or whatever. But it's, it's a happy Yuletide note. But that's the only piece of that story that's even remotely related to the season. So that was 74, 75, 76. Those were their holiday grab bags. What'd they do in 77? They didn't do a grab bag. They went a whole different way and published the Flintstones Christmas Party. And this was their 1977 seasonal offerings. This was, this was a colorful, Hanna-Barbera, character-filled jubilee of Christmas fun. Every character you can imagine is in there. The popular ones, not every one. Um, but unlike the grab bags, all the stories in this treasury were Christmas-themed. Now, I'll be honest. I never read this treasury. I did get it as a kid. But for some reason, mine's in horrible shape, which probably means I used it quite a bit as a drawing reference. I used to do a lot of little drawings as a kid. Um, I know for a fact that I deciphered this little Scooby mystery puzzle in the back of the book. And, um, and, and I just love the cover on this and, and the back and all the, the artwork. And maybe I should one day actually read the book. But that's where they went in 1977. And that's the extent of their treasuries in terms of Christmas-themed treasuries. Uh, really amazing stuff. And just to sort of round out our little 
um, Christmas themed treasury show here. I want to throw in one more. There was this treasury that I never saw as a kid, which has had to buy as an adult for the sake of completing my collection, not even realizing that it came out in 1977, I think, 75, 76, somewhere around there. And this was the Christmas and Archie treasury. Beautiful graphics, colorful art in that typical Archie comic fashion, and wonderful Christmas stories throughout. At the time, I think well worth the dollar price tag. Yes, a dollar. That would be back in the 70s. But like last time, what's the point of this? You know, look, I, I don't know if you guys have read these books and what they did for you as a child. Or maybe, you know, you you weren't even born at that time. It's a huge possibility. But these were really huge books for me. And for a couple of reasons. Number one, they got me into reading comics. They got me reading because, you know, I mean, I, I did read as a kid, but I read much more. With, when it came to comics, comics, as was that Art Spiegelman, is that who said it, are the gateway to literacy. And abs I absolutely agree with that. So what I'm asking you to do, if you see these, you know, that are not in great shape, because some of these are very expensive and near mint condition, you know, pick them up for your kids. Give them to your kids. Put them in a stocking, you know, and just see what they do with them. Maybe they'll read them, maybe they won't. But, you know, give them that chance. Because I can tell you now, if my father didn't do this for me, I don't know if I'd be into comics at all. Because treasuries were the way that I got into comic books. So, that's pretty much it. Look, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Christmas treasuries. If you haven't seen the, Dis the uh, DC video, please check that out. And um, if you, when you get a chance, if you're on Whatnot, look for those. Look for upcoming sales for us. We're country underscore club underscore comics. And we have a couple of sales coming up this um, this month. We've we had two Silver Age sales of independent books, so Dell and Gold Key and Charlton, all that stuff. We're gonna have one more of those, and then we're gonna have, I believe, a Batman Detective sale, bronze issues, modern, some silver in that, and then we're also going to have um, Marvel Silver Age, cool stuff with that. And we're probably going to have a slab sale at some point as well. Now, also, if you're stuck for stocking stuffer gifts, you know, because everybody waits till the last minute. Oh, I want to get a cute little thing. Cute. This is the I have some great stuff for you guys. Very inexpensive. So you want to just come to these shows, check out our Buy It Now in the store, and you'll find some really, really cool stuff. Very inexpensively priced. Um, but otherwise, just stop by and say hello. All right, and that's it. So, um, look, thanks for watching this video. And if I don't see you in the next video, have a great holiday. And uh, if you get a chance, like, subscribe, make a comment. I love reading the comments about um, the treasuries. I haven't gotten any yet. Please leave me a comment. I want to know if these mean anything to you. It's kind of important. Um, I don't find a lot of people that value the treasuries as much as I do. And, uh, and that's it. So, the best to you and yours, guys. Ciao.